Hello, everyone, and welcome to week two of USMLE Domination. This is the second high yield tutorial. Again, we're going to look at some topics that are very high yield for USMLE through the lens of imaging. Um, and today we're going to talk about intracranial hemorrhage. This is a topic that, you know, we don't really learn how to diagnose that on a CT in med school. So hopefully this will be very beneficial for your USMLE step one, step two, and step three questions. By far, you are most likely to see these six types of hemorrhages on the USMLE exam, the epidural hematoma, subdural hematoma, subarachnoid hemorrhage, lobar hemorrhage, and AVM, and hypertensive hemorrhage. So we'll go through these uh, in concert. So an epidural hematoma, this is a non-con CT image of the head or the brain. All hemorrhage is going to be bright on a non-contrast CT examination. So here is the epidural hematoma here. Notice that it's you know, it's along the convexity, it's along the periphery of the brain. It has a convex border, kind of like a, le a lens-shaped border, right? Um, so that's very important. And then if you take a look here, it's highly associated with skull fractures. So you, they may show you uh, an image in bone window showing uh, the break in the calvarium or the skull as well. These are usually associated with rupture of the middle meningeal artery. So that's also an important thing. And clinically, the vignette may talk about or speak about a lucid interval where they lose consciousness, then they're fine for about five or six hours, and then they deteriorate after that. So that is very characteristic of an epidural hematoma. But what you're looking for is this hyperdense uh, convex contour hemorrhage along the periphery of the convexity. That's in contrast to a subdural hematoma, which is also seen along the convexity and along the periphery of the brain. But notice that it's crescenteric shaped, right, with a concave border, right? So this dense material here is all subdural hematoma. And notice that it exerts mass effect on the brain parenchyma because it's an extra axial fluid collection. These are usually due to tearing of cortical bridging veins. Okay, so a nice example of subdural hematoma. Subarachnoid hemorrhage should be thought about as hemorrhage or blood within the sulci or the cistern. So, you know, this star-shaped cistern here is known as the supracellar cistern. This should normally be as dark as this, the, the part of the lateral ventricle right here, right? But it should be nice and black, but it's bright because it's totally filled with blood. This smiley face cistern here is known as a quadrigeminal plate cistern. This also has subarachnoid hemorrhage in it as well. And then these linear areas of bright, bright uh, density here is also subarachnoid hemorrhage in some of the salsa. So you can get it, any hemorrhage with it. So this is like a normal salsa right here, this you know dark area here. So any hemorrhage within sulci or cisterns is subarachnoid hemorrhage. It's mostly due to either trauma or rupture of an aneurysm. And here I'm showing you a coronal CTA image of an aneurysm. So this is the right ICA coming here, the left ICA, the MCA coming on this side, the MCA coming on this side. And then here are the anterior cerebral arteries. And right here, the anterior communicating artery, there's a focal dilation or outpouching of contrast here. This is a anterior communicating artery aneurysm, focal dil dilation, or outpouching of a vessel, right? That's what you wanna look for when you look for an aneurysm. So that's what an aneurysm looks like on a CT. And a big USMLE favorite is the high association of Berry aneurysms with autosomal dominant adult polycystic kidney disease, where you get, this is a coronal CT image of the abdomen. You get enlargement of both kidneys that are replaced with simple cysts. So this is a kidney here. This is the right kidney. This is the left kidney. Notice that they're completely replaced almost with these simple cysts, these hypodense structures, these ovoid structures, which are simple cysts. There are some cysts in the liver, but the dominant finding here is, you know, enlarged kidneys with simple cysts in this adult autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Lobar hemorrhages, when you get hyperdensity confined in a lobulated uh, contour within a lobe of the of the brain. This is the uh, left frontal lobe. This, you know, hypodense or darker area is edema around this lobar hemorrhage. Okay, so it's within the parenchyma of the brain itself. AVM should be looked at as, you know, uh, tangle entangled vessels that are, you know, abutting each other. So this is a, a CTA image of the brain showing all these entangled vessels right next to each other. On an MR, this is a T2 weighted MR. Because vessels have no signal, there's flow voids, you start to get these dark flow voids or dark, dark entanglement of vessels right next to each other. Nice example of arteriovenous malformations. And finally, a hypertensive bleed or hypertensive hemorrhage is when you have hemorrhage or hyperdense blood along the midline structures, such as the basal ganglia, the thalamus, the pons maybe, and even the cerebellum. In this case, we have a left basal ganglia, hypertensive bleed, 
in the area of the external capsule and the putamen, right? So they may show this image on the US MLE and say, what laboratory abnormality could be seen in this patient? And of course, the answer is going to be a blood pressure of 180, 190, 200, something that suggests a hypertensive urgency or hypertensive emergency, right? So when you start to see blood near the midline within the parenchyma of the brain itself, think about a hypertensive hemorrhage. So in summary, the take-home points for the US MLE for epidural hematoma, convex border, lucid interval clinically, and then associated with a middle meningeal artery rupture. Subdural hematoma, again, has a concave border. Um, and the one thing I didn't say is it can be associated with non accidental trauma. So child abuse in children, right? They sometimes can present with subdural hematomas as well. Um, Subarachnoid hemorrhage is blood within the sulci or the cisterns. There's a high association of very aneurysms with adult autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Remember that association. Lobar hemorrhage is lobulated, well-defined blood within uh, the brain parenchyma, a specific lobe of the, of the brain. AVMs are tangles of blood vessels on imaging. And of course, a hypertensive bleed is when you get blood along the midline near the basal ganglia, the pons, and the cerebellum. Hope this was helpful. Um, we'll do the same thing again next week for a very high yield topic. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share. There's no reason why all of you guys can't place in the 90th percentile in the USMLE. Um, take a look at these, and hopefully these are helpful and spread the word. Thank you so much for your attention.